You're looking at Tommy Tuberville back when he was a very successful college football coach. One of the very best, perhaps most famously, at Auburn University. And now he's a United States senator. He did it. He is a sitting United States senator, Republican of Alabama. Tommy Tuberville, welcome to Newsmax. How are you, sir? Thank you, Greg. Good to be with you. How do you like being a senator so far? Serious question. Well, it's been a little bumpy my first month and a half. Uh, we kind of run the gambit, you know, the, the uh, protest and, of course, uh, reconciliation and voterama. And then we wasted a week with an impeachment trial. And, and now we're getting ready to do another reconciliation. Uh, it, it's interesting here, but uh, I'm enjoying it. I know that uh, we're in, in the minority right now, but we just got to keep fighting back and hopefully understand that we can regain this thing back in two years. I would imagine you were a coach, very successful. There have to be some skills that are coming in handy now, or maybe not, but something as a coach that you're able to apply to your life as a legislator. Well, patience, Greg. <laughs> I've learned that quite quickly in my life in terms of dealing with people and have patience, be able to communicate. The thing that we're doing a little bit more, I think, in the Senate than they are in the House. We're communicating more. We're talking. Uh, we're trying to talk through situations. Uh, we're trying to make the country better. Uh, but the problem is right now is, it, you know, we, we are in the minority. And as long as we can keep the filibuster where it's 60 votes, then we're added into the conversation. But now that we're into reconciliation and they know they can get pretty much anything pushed through with 51 votes, we're going to have to work awfully hard and try to do the best thing we can for the people of this country. Speaking of the country and the best we can, I mean, the COVID situation. I saw Joe Biden, by the way, uh, walk up to a doctor without his mask on. This from the guy who's been lecturing us about masks uh, for so long. He was very tentative when he spoke about the vaccine, the one that the Trump administration really made happen. What are your thoughts overall about COVID relief and where we are right now in this, uh, in this battle? Well, I had an opportunity to visit yesterday and today with General Piera, uh, President Trump's uh, appointee to run the Operation Warp Speed. And as I told him, I think they're doing a great job. You know, it's, it's, it's a miracle what we've done being able to get the vaccine in, what, eight or nine months. And I know it's come out slow, but, you know, you have to produce this thing. But uh, I think the people in charge of this have done outstanding. I know in the state of Alabama, our, our virus uh, infections are going down. Our hospitals are emptying out. Uh, it's not all the way over yet. We've still got to get the vaccine. But we still have to social distance, do everything we possibly can, but get it to the people that really need it. But take the vaccine. Uh, we've got still have people that won't take it uh, for some reason, but we have to make sure we, as I told the general today, marketing is going to be a big part of this in the coming weeks because there's going to be people that be people that we have to sell the fact that you have to take this vaccine. 75 percent, close to 75 percent of the people have to take this vaccine to make sure that we get herd immunity. So I'll take it as soon as it's available. I don't think I'm eligible quite yet, and uh, I'm looking forward to it, by the way. Hey, Space Force. President Trump came up with Space Force, and they're still kind of, I guess, in the planning and early planning stages. I understand you have a proposed home for the Space Force? Well, uh, before President Trump left, it was awarded to Huntsville in Alabama, where we have NASA, we, we have uh, the Redstone Arsenal, we have all the infrastructure for it to be. And I was called... Uh, by the Secretary of Air Force. They did their due diligence. They looked at six locations. The main thing about Huntsville is we have all the infrastructure in terms of uh, FBI 5000 will be there, all the cybersecurity, uh, the protection of, of Redstone Arsenal, uh, all the things that go along with missile defense is in Huntsville. It was a natural. It's going to save the American taxpayers millions and millions of dollars because putting it there, we don't have to build from this from scratch. So uh, actually, it's Space Command, Greg. Space Command is is the area that controls all of space. And now Space Force is kind of like uh, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. So Space Command is the area that just controls everything that goes into space and uh, obviously with what China's doing and some of these other countries, we're going to need to protect ourselves with our satellites. You know, uh, Huntsville, you didn't mention, I think you guys have Space Camp. Don't, isn't Space Camp in Huntsville, Alabama, where the, the kids can go and get a little orientation? I, 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 there was a movie once called Space Camp, and here we got a bunch of little kids, actually look like middle schoolers maybe, our early high schoolers. Is Space Camp still a thing? Yeah, it's still a thing. It got hit pretty hard with COVID. 
because we had to shut it down and, and, and it needs funding. But it's something that's very important. We've had a lot of kids go through that over the years. You know, it's, it's like workforce development, Greg. I'm an educator. I've, I've been in education all my life. We have to get kids invested in other things where they can make a living when they get out instead of just sitting behind a computer. Uh, get them invested in something early in life, whether it's grade school or junior high or high school, where they can use their hands, be a builder, construction worker, a pharmacist, get them out there where they can get out in our workforce. Number one, make a great living for themselves, raise a family, but also be productive in the greatest country on the face of the earth. Oh, schools, COVID. Uh, I heard one of the teachers union chiefs say, probably uh, as soon as we get 30% more teachers and 30% more space and uh, you know, a thousand percent vaccinations, then we'll go back to school. It sounds like so many Forgive me, teachers and the teachers union, they want to blow off the rest of the school year. Um, what's happening in Alabama and your thoughts on that? Well, we're in school in Alabama uh, and as most of the South. I, don't, I really don't understand it. Of all the important things that we have in our country, education to me is number one. Education is the key to freedom. And we have these kids that are at home, uh, they're getting in trouble, we have a huge mental health problem. It's a disaster and I do not understand Teachers are first responders. They went to school, got educated to be teachers, to help young men and women. You're not just a teacher, you're, you're an educator, you're a coach, you're a mentor, you're a counselor. You're also a mom and dad to kids away from home, you know, for six or seven or eight hours. A lot of these kids don't have parents. And uh, so they get most of what they learn in life. Now they learn moral values, hopefully at home, but what they get at, at the schools, whether it's athletics or in the classroom, they learn leadership, they learn everything to become a responsible citizen in the United States of America. We've got to open up. These teacher unions are killing, are actually killing our kids, and they need to wake up. They need to go back to work, open these schools. They've got plenty of money. The government, we have just thrown money at them, getting ready to throw another $170 million billion dollars at, in, to our schools here in, in, with this reconciliation yeah. uh, budget bill. And so, hey, it is what it is. Hopefully they'll listen. But in the state of Alabama, our teachers are at work educating their kids in a lot of other states. But unfortunately, in a lot of the bigger cities, they're not doing it. Senator, thank you so much. A hey, really quick question. I've noticed that you are another leader, great coach, now a senator with the name, I assume you were born with the name Thomas and you go by Tommy. It reminds me of Tommy Franks, the general, and Tommy Thompson, right? What is it about the name Tommy? I mean, like there are leaders who are named Thomas usually go with Tommy. Um, well, it's just kind of a nickname. Of course, I've been called a lot of, being a coach, Greg, you're called a lot of things. Some of them I can't mention on the air, but uh, uh, you know, Tommy is kind of a nickname off of Thomas, and 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 that's what they call. That's what my dad, and mom, and dad call me forever. But uh, uh, you know, it's uh, it's kind of a common name where a lot of people remember it more than Thomas. Uh, well, I, it, it works. And again, I see these great leaders, and they go with Tommy instead of Thomas, uh, like you and the general. And uh, I don't think too many people were saying bad things uh, to your face. Maybe maybe in the locker room after you left or the opposing team, but from they're the not stands, gonna Greg, the, from the stands, Greg. From the stands. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. You you got a whole. You got a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. All, All right. right. To be continued, sir. Many thanks, Senator Tommy Tuberville, Republican of Alabama. All the best. Hi, Emma Reckenberg here. If you like this video, there's a whole lot more to see on Newsmax TV. You can watch for free right here on our YouTube live stream and be the first one here each time our experts break down real news. Just hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon, and stay with us on America's fastest growing cable news channel, Newsmax TV.